This is my Bruce Lee honest review of The Sims 4 Home Chef Hustle. This is part of a series where I review every pack of The Sims 4, including all of the old ones. EA describes this pack about living your cooking dreams and becoming a masterful home chef. New small appliances with a big kitchen upgrade. Selling your culinary creations to your neighbors and cooking in style. Before we go into today's video, I would like to apologize for the ratchet setup. I am not at home right now. So if everything sounds so looks a bit weird. <laughs> you know why. Taking a look at create a sim mode, the cast here is very much Sims 4 base game. It doesn't really match the standards we've seen for cast in many of the later packs. We have so many kitchen aprons and outfits already in dine out, get to work, cool kitchen stuff, for example. So I'm not really sure if we needed any more. We got a basic t-shirt and a hoodie, which to be honest, aren't that inventive. I just feel like the cast here was added because they had to and not because they wanted to. I don't really feel like the kitchen aprons are really that usable because they don't automatically apply an apron to their current outfit when they cook. You would have to go to the wardrobe, plan the outfit, put the outfit on your sims before cooking, which is just a little bit unrealistic and long-winded and it doesn't really make much sense. Almost everything in the pack is unisex, which means we actually got a lot less cast than it looks like because it's just stuff that's been replicated over. Although I do really like the fade cut, finally male sims just get a normal haircut. I've been asking for it for quite a long time now. I don't know why the sims team was so reluctant to do it, but finally we've got it. We also got a very cursed frou-frou beanie, which I believe is supposed to look like a cupcake. I know 99% of simmers will look at this and think, oh my god, this is so cute. But guys, like it does look pretty awful. <laughs> we also got some cursed jewelry to go with it, which is pizza earrings and whisk earrings. Again, like it's so random, but I do actually quite like it. We also finally got Crocs in the game. They're Croc- what do you say when Crocs are turbo mode? Sport mode. Yeah. We got Crocs in sport mode. The cast does not go above and beyond but instead plays it safe with what we'd expect whilst keeping it relatively vanilla and bland. Create a sim mode gets a 4 out of 10. So the key selling point of build mode is the kitchen set. We've got counters, cabinets and a refrigerador. It's actually really nice. It's modern but it doesn't look modern in a bland way because I feel like sometimes modern can just end up looking a little bit basic, but I actually feel like they put a lot of effort into it. Although the corner cabinet piece is a shelf, which just looks really ridiculous. They should have just made a normal looking shelf that was like a corner shelf and then just given us a normal corner cabinet on top of that. It feels a little bit weird, like they just ran out of time, so they just remeshed the shelf and turned it into a corner cabinet. I feel like we should have just got a normal corner cabinet. The pack comes with some nice new cluster objects, Although excluding the new appliances, there isn't really that much build stuff here, especially compared to cool kitchen stuff. I'm not going to come out here and be like, oh my god, this pack's amazing. I'm going to cry my eyes out. We've got a new kitchen. Like, it's not that deep. We've already got so much kitchen stuff already, especially if you own a couple of the other packs. But I do think it is a nice kitchen. It's much better than the cool kitchen stuff kitchen. Although cool kitchen stuff had a lot of clutter items, whereas this pack does not have any barely. This pack definitely needs a little bit more decorative stuff, especially seeing me that we got the kitchen shelves. I feel like they should have given us a lot of clutter to go with it. I actually think the kitchen is probably one of the best in the game, and I know I'm going to use it a lot in all of my builds, but the pack doesn't contain enough for me to say like, oh my god, this is groundbreaking. It gets a 7 out of 10 for build mode. Taking a look at the gameplay, before I go into the new appliances and the market store, I just want to express that cooking has been overhauled slightly. The pack comes with a usable food processor that you can use to make things like prepared vegetables and prepared meat and then add it to certain dishes. And this also applies to some of the base game recipes too. One thing that you can make with it is batter, which is obviously used to make the new pizzas and the waffles with the pizza oven and the waffle maker. Both of these new appliances actually have a lot of great recipes. Obviously, which one you choose doesn't really have much gameplay impact, but it's nice to have all the different options there. At first, I was worried that the gameplay would just kind of feel like normal cooking but without much substance but it actually feels different and that's because you actually have a lot more control over what you're cooking. If you do like being in control <laughs> 
if you do like being in control of what you're cooking, I think it makes the gameplay feel a lot more rewarding and challenging other than just using the simple living lock tray over and over again. And that's because it makes it feel a lot more personalized. You don't have to pre-mix the batter. You don't have to do these things, but obviously it's a lot cheaper if you do so. It also reduces cooking time, which is really useful if you are using the food stall mechanic. Now the food stand itself and all of the small appliances can actually be carried in your Sims inventory, which means you can set up a food stand anywhere, which is really great. The stand has slots for two different appliances. So you might want to use the food processor plus the pizza oven, for example. Sims will always buy a single serving, even if you make a party size of food. So you don't have to make the same thing over and over again. You can switch it up and keep making different things when you are doing the sale. I will say the selling mechanic is not really that depth. It works in the exact same way as a standard yard sale stand in that you mark up prices in the same way you would with the yard sale stand. Although it doesn't really matter which price you set them at because Sims will always buy them eventually. The pack does have some great cross pack play with basically any pack that comes with a small appliance that creates food, which is really good. I also think that it's good you can sell food from anywhere in any world. Another issue is that when Sims buy food, they just stand over the food stall getting in the way. Sims aren't really smart enough to always sit down and eat properly. Another oversight is if you have leftover food, you can't actually bin it because obviously if you have spoiled food, sometimes you can't always sell it from your inventory. It's kind of hit or miss. So in order to discard it, you need to either put it in a sink or you need to put it in a bin. But if you go on a community lot or in an area where there is no sink or bin, you can't really discard it. I feel like they should have put a bin underneath the food stand like built in. I feel like that would have made a lot more sense, but it's just a small oversight. The pack comes with two new aspirations. They both start off a little bit awkward and rigid and tutorially, but at the high level tiers of the aspirations, they feel like proper aspirations do with some actually really challenging tasks, which I like. I actually don't hate this stuff pack, which is rare for me because I usually think that stuff packs are never really worth the money. Although I will say it does feel like recycled content and that's because it basically is the yard sale mechanic. But whereas before the coding for the yard sale locked away food so you couldn't sell food from it, now it's basically just been unlocked. So you're not really paying for brand new content, just recycled content. It is just a stuff pack. And as with all stuff packs, apart from paranormal stuff, they are a little bit limited and underwhelming in terms of their gameplay. I don't think you will be overwhelmed with the content that comes in this pack, but if you do enjoy running your own business and selling things, and I do actually think you will enjoy it, it definitely enhances cooking in a way that makes it more fun and it makes it a lot more rewarding to sell food. And in many ways, it's better than dying out because with the dying out game pack, you can't even make the food and sell it. Whereas with this one, you can make it and sell it. For the gameplay of my first Home Chef Hustle stuff, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. In total, I am giving this pack a 6 out of 10.